Here's another unit that I got given to me. It's a, an NAD CD player. This one doesn't work. Guy brought it to me. Same guy that gave me the amp too, the receiver. He said, ah, oh, this junk doesn't work. I'm just taking it to recycling. Do you want it? And I said, sure. So, single disc NAD CD player. Let's see if we can get this one working. And this one threw me for a bit. Here's an ad 5320 CD player. This one's mine. Got it from the same place as I got the uh, 7125 receiver. I was told it doesn't work. The receiver did. Let's see if we can lock out with this. So this one doesn't appear to be working. Let's uh, pop the top off. This one's dated 1989. So it's a few years old. Made in Japan, not China. Three screws to hold the back on. Kind of like that receiver, just the screws in the back. There's the inner workings of the unit. Oh, okay. It uh, does not appear to be. Oh, I have a slipping belt right here. Could that be the problem? Just the belt is, is shot. I believe that might be the problem. Just a slipping belt. Wouldn't that be fun? If it was just that belt that was bad. Let's uh, see if we can change it. Probably the easiest thing to do on this would be to remove the deck. Because I don't know where that belt goes. But if I can remove the... Uh, actual deck itself. This front should be held in place by a couple catches. There they are. Little catches you have to release. Right here. There. Now I should be able to lift the whole transport out by just removing a couple of screws that hold it in place. Namely these ones here, the four screws on the side. And of course this ground screw over here needs to come out. Ah, there's the belt right there. I don't want to undo these plugs just because they're providing the, the uh, grounding for the optical pickup. 
And of course, if you know anything about these optical pickups, if you unplug them, you have to put a short across the laser diode or you risk damaging it. So I try to keep the, the uh, plugs in so that they're not going to uh, So they're not going to uh, allow any electrostatic discharge to build up. I wonder what the easiest way to get this out is probably to remove this gear. If I remove this cam gear, if I take this little switch out here first, pop out this little switch, little plastic clip that holds it in place, lift out this switch without breaking it. Looking for something to press it with. Screwdriver. There we go. Now I can lift the switch out of the way. I can remove this screw here. Remove the cam gear. And now I can get at the belt change the belt. That's so easy the belt comes out. Let's see if I can find one that's slightly smaller. That one's a little smaller. That'll probably do the job. We'll first uh, fish it through over the motor and then pull it around from the bottom side here. Screw back in. When I rotate this gear, it should eject the mechanism. Okay, pop the switch back in place. We're going to put a bit of contact cleaner on this switch just to make sure that it's clean. I'll just use some deoxid uh, D100 to use this stuff.
I'll just put a little bit on the contacts. I'm just giving them kind of a bit of a scratch using the the applicator. That'll keep any oxidation from forming. Take time to reset the unit back into the chassis. So the little shock absorbers here sit on the plastic pegs and then the screws just hold the chassis in place allowing it to float. So these just secure the chassis down to the base. The chassis is floating on these rubber grommets. screw it back in I'll put the front cover back on. It just snaps in place. Just like that. It appears to work. Let's go to the next track. Maybe I spoke too soon. kind of slow at searching the track, isn't it? But we know it plays. I better remove this thing again and just uh, Check the uh, lubrication on the other gears just to see that it's uh, not sticking and binding now that we know that it works. 
So of course the laser is driven back and forth by this motor here and gear assembly and what can happen is this lubricant can get dried up on the rails here and on the gearing although it doesn't appear to be it seems to be moving really freely here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some lubricant onto the rails just to make sure they're not going to get stuck and then we'll try it again uh, there's another switch here probably wouldn't hurt to put some deoxid on that other little switch this one's just the the lead-in switch which tells the microcontroller when the laser is at its home position sometimes these switches here also go bad they need to be cleaned Gonna power the unit up while holding on to it to watch the mechanism move back. Okay, I can try loading a disc with the unit apart. Kind of tilt it up kind of upright. Okay, kind of going backwards there. It's typically a, a focusing problem. Now this is not the way to set these things up. You really got to hook them up to a scope and look at the eye pattern. But uh, I figure maybe a slight tweak Good thing I have pictures of it the way it was so I could put it back. That's another thing that's important about recording um, whenever you're working on equipment. Record it. That way you've got a record. If you touch any controls and you mess things up, you can see where you started to put them back where they were to begin with. As I had to do on this. Because as we'll see... There's really nothing wrong with this. I'll give you a clue, and it took me a while to clue into this. If you watch the Netflix series, The Spy, part five and part six, you see how he got caught. 
Well, that's kind of what's causing my problem here. So let's try this again here. I do believe we have the problem solved. I was just going to start getting into this thing, checking the alignment and everything, and then it dawned on me, wait a minute, a little earlier today when I was working on the NAD receiver, I turned on my 400 milliwatt uh, AM transmitter. Yeah, I, thought, I bet it's interfering with this. Went and turned it off, and now it's playing properly. So I'm putting a, a commercial disc in now to see how it's tracking. Seems to be finding the tracks pretty quick. We'll go back to the uh, CDR in a minute here. Oh, oh yeah, it's amazing when you got some a smudge on the disc. What it's going to do? Let's try that track 15 again that was skipping. There's track one. There we go. It's playing it properly now. Let's go back to my let's go back to my CDR. It's got my royalty free music that I can play. Now remember these old CD players well, oh, this one's got some scratches on it too, so we'll see how how it handles this. But these older CD players generally did not play CDRs as well as they played pressed discs, just because when this was made, CDR was still relatively new. Back then, this is what '89, I think I said this was from. CDRs were still relatively new back then, so some CD players didn't play them properly. But looks like this one's playing fine. Go through all 18 tracks on here. I like the DAC in here. You notice the DAC? It's a it's an NAD DAC one. I don't know whether they made their own chip. That could be a custom run for 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 NAD. It doesn't appear to be a sticker or anything on it. I don't think. Oh, well, I guess oh, it is a sticker. I wonder whose it is sticker on top of this thing. I probably shouldn't probably shouldn't put my fingers near there while it's playing because I'm sure I'm gonna pull cause some interference. I'd be curious to see if there's anything under under this chip. Oh it's a Sanyo chip. <laughs> it's a Sanyo LC7881 DA converter that uh, NAD has decided just to put their own sticker on and call it their own. Judging from the chips that I see in this thing, they all appear to be uh, Sanyo. I'm beginning to think that maybe this was made by Sanyo for NAD in Japan. What do you guys think? Anyway, it appears to be playing the tracks, so um, 
just changed the belt in this one. This one appears to be working too. And it's even playing a CDR. I should try the other CDR I've got. Uh, I've got a couple, like I've, there are different types of CDRs. This is an older one that's got the dark uh, green. This one's got 20 tracks on it. This is on a Staples branded disc. And again, it's, it's hacked up. <clears throat> one thing I miss about my new car is the CD player. I really miss the CD player in my car. My old car had one that would play MP3 discs. The, the new car doesn't. I have to put everything onto a USB stick or onto an SD card. But I miss the I miss the the way I could just grab any uh, disc and just take it with me. You know, make up a, a, a disc of what I wanted to listen to. MP3 format was fine. You know, get 150 tracks on a disc. You could just take the disc, throw it in the car, and listen to it. I could make up playlists and just carry a few discs with me. I miss that. Now everything's all my MP3 player. Yeah, I've got everything with me, but when you've got 20, I got to think, I think I have 23,000 tracks. This is track 18, by the way. 23,000 tracks. It takes, you know, if you want to find something, it's, it's, not, it's not easy to find. There's the difference in the discs, you see? This is one of the older style discs. This would have been like, a, I think this is like a, maybe a 12 times writable. But I think these ones here, longevity wise, these ones, last a lot longer because uh, the dye is much darker it's not as influenced from ultraviolet light as uh, these newer ones are but let's see how it handles this nicely scratched disc also this is a 700 this is a 700 megabyte disc whereas this one was a 650 so there's more on this disc we'll see if it plays this one okay Two. Actually seems to be reading this one actually better than, the, than this one, probably because it's more reflective. This one being the dark blue uh, tends to uh, absorb more of the laser. The green ones were the same. I think these ones probably have a longer uh, shelf life, but they're not as easy to read because they're not as reflective as can be seen from the faster searching speeds. At least it's got 20 tracks on it. So this is eight. Might as well show you guys the, so if you wanna see what music I've got, these are the tracks. This is number nine, Star Walk. Number 10, Super Smooth. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. You can see the disc slowing down as we're getting closer to the edge of the disc. Eighteen. and track 20 finally we'll go back to track number one and there we go so this year is playing I didn't have to do much 
in the way of touch up. I didn't even have to put the scope on this thing. I thought when it wasn't playing there, I thought for sure I was going to have to do an alignment. I actually went and got the uh, service manual for it to look up the alignment procedure and went, ugh, I'm not going to do this. I have to make low pass filters and jigs with capacitors and resistors in it to hook up to it, to hook up to the scope. And I thought, what the heck? I'm going to do go to all that trouble. Look at this disc. You can see through it. Look at that. You can see the stuff below here. They're, they're almost transparent, these discs. And then it, I walked back into the shop and looked at, wait a minute. That stupid AM transmitter's on from when I was testing. I wonder if it's causing interference. Turn it off and the thing plays. Radio interference. Gotta love it. It's not much power, it's just that the uh, the transmitting antenna is only about eight feet away from where I am. So that's why. Anyway, there's my NAD CD player. Put it back together, it's good as new. This will go with that little receiver that uh, I think I'm going to take and hook up in my bedroom to listen to in there. Yes, I think that's where it's going to go the CD player as well. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon. Bye for now.